Well, hello, I'm John Worrell, I'm Professor of Philosophy of Science in the department and I was asked to um, say a little bit about the history of our department and I thought I would give it a slant by intermingling it with my, a bit of my own history. I actually arrived at the LSE uh, as an undergraduate shortly after the end of the First World War, well, maybe not quite that long ago but certainly a long, long time ago in 1965 with the intention of studying statistics. This was on the basis of a five-minute careers interview, which is all I ever had at my North Country Grammar School, which established basically three things, that my favourite subject was maths, that I quite liked the idea of being rich, and that I would be useless at business. So the suggestion was that I would become an actuary, that would be the highest paid profession in the UK. Uh, I had no idea what actuaries did, but I asked, OK, that sounds fine. Where should I go to study? And they, they, guy said, go to the LSE and specialise in statistics. So that's what I did. Unfortunately for my prospects of ever being rich, I uh, went along to hear the lectures, uh, widely touted lectures, Very everybody in the school excited about it. Lots of people from different departments used to go to hear Sir Karl Popper, as he had just become then, give his course on problems of philosophy. And he was, it was all very charismatic. He was talking about uh, how he'd taught to the eminent Polish logician Alfred Tarski on a park bench in Vienna about Tarski's fundamental contributions to the theory of truth, about his correspondence with Einstein and so on. And, and although I'd been perfectly happy doing t tests and chi squared tests and analysis of variance, uh, it paled into insignificance really. And I decided that I would like to switch over to philosophy, which was easily done in those days. And then it turned out I was assigned Imre Lakatos, the other big charismatic figure in the history of the department, as, ch as tutor, both at undergraduate level and eventually PhD level, so I really was hooked. So let's talk a little bit about Popper. Popper was born in Vienna in 1902. He's widely regarded as the most uh, important philosopher of science of the 20th century. Certainly outside of philosophy itself, uh, if you, particularly in the biomedical sciences, if you mention philosophy of science, their first response will be uh, Karl Popper. Uh, he'd gone fleeing from the Nazis to New Zealand and came to LSE in 1946 at the invitation of Lionel Robbins, eminent economist, uh, Lord Robbins, uh, and although there weren't actually formally departments then, if, if departments eventually evolved and Popper became the, uh, the head of it. Uh, he was principally invited by Robbins to the LSE on the basis of his work in political philosophy and philosophy of social science, open society and its enemies, and uh, the poverty of historicism. But once he got here, of course, he was free to do what he liked, and he mostly went back to his primary interest in philosophy of science that he'd written about in his most important work, I think, uh, Logic de Forschung, or Logic of Scientific Discovery. Uh, and so he built up around him uh, a whole set of very brilliant people in philosophy of science, which principally meant philosophy of physics then, though he himself did have interests in Darwinism. And one of these was Imre Lakatos, uh, who had also had a very interesting history. He was a Hungarian, born in 1922. He too had fled the Nazis, though he stayed in, uh, in Hungary with, um, amongst a group of young Jews who were evading the Nazis. Then after the war, he became quite eminent in the uh, Hungarian uh, Ministry of Education, part of the communist or Stalinist government then. Made some in influential enemies and ended up in um, what the most notorious gulag-style prison camp in Hungary, Resht, for three years, much of it spent in solitary confinement. Then he managed to get out in 1956 with the Hungarian uprising and of course made fundamental contributions both to the philosophy of maths through his proofs and refutations and philosophy of science through his methodology of scientific research programs. So that was quite an interesting mix. There were lots, lots of frictions between Popper and Lakatos, but it was a really, really exciting time to be around from when I graduated in 68. I went straight on to the PhD and it was Popper's seminar was one of the great uh, highlights um, and uh, Popper, Lakatos, John Watkins, Alan Musgrave, occasionally Joe Agassi were constantly sparring with each other and it was really exciting for young 
uh, starting philosopher such as myself. Uh, so there's always been this long tradition in the department of uh, interest in the philosophy of science, which didn't sit particularly well with, uh, with the rest of the school, although they've always been interested in it, of course. Uh, and more recently, we have developed um, another string to our bow, a very much interacting string, if you can have interacting strings on your bow, um, in more in the foundations of economics, rational decision theory, uh, philosophy of social science, policy and so on. And uh, the two sides of the department uh, fit together very well. I think we still certainly maintain this very strong uh, tradition that we inherited from Popper, who uh, retired in 68, like Atosh, but although he kept uh, attending uh, his own seminar for many years after that, and Lakatosh died in 74, but they certainly set the seeds for this very strong tradition in philosophy of science, which is recognised around the world still, the contributions that people in the present department make.